My name is Corfolian. Corfolian. I am in direct contact and a portion with the Blue Avian culture. Thank you. Welcome. You're on record. Um, I intend to publish this piece. If it brings no problems to any individuals, I will accept that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just learned about the spheres and um, your mission. So any explanation, any, any uh, insight into your mission would be wonderful. We have always been close with humanity in many different cultures, Egyptian, Atlantean, sometimes in the Greek culture, and many times in mythology. We may have changed our look for some of these visitations and interventions, but we are always here to help and to guide. We are here to protect as well, but not on a hands-on basis. We are here to protect in a more doctrinal way. We will have those around us controlled so that they are not interfering with your particular space. Therefore, we are in charge of allowing and ex allowing exit to those beings and cultures that are visiting at your at this particular time. Wonderful. Um, are you working with other species on your ships? Working with is not the correct term. We uh -huh. are working. Well, we are working as managerial staff to many of them. Uh-huh. Um, what, are you physical? That is an interesting question. In some ways, we are physical, yes. In other ways, to you, we would not appear physical. But we are, in our own realm, physical. Um, what part of time are you, what percentage of time in your realm are you in your body? Do your bodies appear and disappear or are you like 99% in your body and be present? Uh, we are in our bodies to maintain the body, mm -hmm. but it the body can be different at different times, but we are in it at all times. Excellent, thank you. Um, how closely are you related to reptilians and drakers? We are not of a humanoid species. However, we are not like the dracos reptilians Billions, insectoids, or mantis beings. We have a different physiology. We are more bird-like. We follow a more bird-like trend, whereas reptilians and insectoids would follow their own trends as far as what life consists of for them. Our trend would be more in the sensibilities of the air. Theirs are earthbound. I see. Uh, genetically, are you closer to reptilians or to earth humans? We are closer to earth humans than we are to reptilians. That's not to say that we are that close, but as far as how we interact socially and our thought processes are much closer 
to human than they are to reptilian, mantis, or insectoid. Also, physiologically, we are not that close to any of these. And physiologically, we would be closer to humans, but not that much. What is your... Um, in the genome, if you compare the genomes of yours and ours, um, what percent of the genome would be similar? 61%. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, are there hybrids of between uh, Earth humans and your species? Not at this time. There was at one time a hybridization program thousands of years ago. They created the pterodactyl species. Right. Yeah, on, in, in, on Earth, I think uh, the birds are very close to reptilians. It's just reptilians which can fly and have few feathers, but otherwise there is a lot of genetic similarity. And they're pretty far from mammals. Yes, their bones are hollow. Our bones in some places are hollow, but not completely. So are you related to our birds, our birds? We had something to do with them being created as they are, but at this time we are far removed from that scenario. Are you genetically related to our birds? Very, in a small way, yes. Say, what percentage of your genome is similar to birds from Earth? About, well, it depends on which birds. Mm -hmm. Their genome percentages go from 52 to 76. I see. Thank you. Are you laying eggs? We did at one time lay eggs. That is no longer part of our reproductive system. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you reproduce? We reproduce differently than we would want to speak about. This is something personal for us. Ah. Do you bring up children in families or in, uh, outside of the families? It depends on the culture of where you were born in our relationship to your status. Uh-huh. Um, so, are you individuals always connected to the higher mind? How strong is higher mind? Higher mind being God, as you call him. Hive. Right, so you have a hive mind of, a, of which you call God? I thought I was thinking about the collective mind of uh, the blue avians. The collective mind of the blue avians does attach to all things and all minds in the collective, in the God and spirit areas. Uh -huh. We do not see things exactly as you do. Mm -hmm. Everything is a collective. I see. Every species is a collective of one kind or another. Although there are individuals within collectives, they are all connected, and therefore to us are collectives. God has several personalities. Mm -hmm. He is a collective of intelligences mm -hmm. and energy, and we see him for many things that he is. One facet of him is not enough, but a collective of facets of the God mind would have to be taken into consideration to know who he is as an energy that has sentience. Right. So you are constantly communicating with certain aspect of God and perform his, um, their will all the time? He allows us free will, although 
there are those that say only humans have it. This is incorrect. God creates all individuals and creatures with free will, and therefore we are able to act upon that. He does give us specific missions if we choose to go about his business. There are portions of our society that will act upon his will and portions that will not. Uh-huh. Uh, are you in the same dimension uh, as um, our friends Pleiadians, Yael, and Arcturians? No. Their, their dimensions are slightly askew from ours. Um, are you comfortable visiting their worlds and staying there physiologically? It is not necessary at this time to visit their worlds but they may interact with us as they please, and we may interact with them also. So would they be able to visit your spheres and uh, feel physiologically comfortable there? With some help. So it's not usual? No. Ah. So what's your relationship with uh, Gork Fitnir and Galactic Federation? We realize that they exist, but we do not have any interference with them. We are considered a um, casual ally, but we do not agree with all the things that they are doing, and they do not agree with all the things that we do as well. So how do you resolve your um, disagreements? We do not. We do not resolve, but we discuss our disagreements. And if they do not resolve, we let them as they are. And we do have mutual respect one for another. And that is how the universe survives. Uh-huh. So is there... Uh committee or the council where you discuss things? If necessary, we send those to speak to other councils, alliances, formations of councils and found foundations or federations. We have people being spoken to at all times with their inquiries. We try to help as much as possible if they want our help. Mm -hmm. So that is a constant communication. You have like direct phone line to York Fitnir, direct phone line for Galactic Federation and so on, right? I would not call it constant. So there is no appointed person who is always responding to the question. So, right? In in our group, there is some that are dedicated uh -huh. to the particular alliances and foundations and councils. And they are the ones that will speak for us. If there are questions or problems, they will bring it to the higher forms of government. Oh, you're talking to... Corey Good, right? A human? You as Corey, a species. Here's our voice, yes. Oh. I am not the one who always or usually speaks to him. He has someone that is an ambassador to him alone. Excellent. Um, so many of our members of our community would be happy to telepathically connect to you or any other way to connect to you. I extend that invitation to speak to, to us and through us. Yes. Um, did you consider expanding the idea of human colony to your areas of control? So our volunteers would be happy to visit you if you are interested. We are not here to take control. 
but we are here to inform and give counsel. We're also here to protect from those that might interfere with your culture. We are to give information that is maybe vital to your survival or to the uh, continuation of the ascension. But other than that, we are here to help maintain status quo. Excellent. Um, were you the ones who uh, dictated the raw material through Carla Eckert? I did not hear the question. I might be pronouncing her name wrong, but Ra material, R-A material, the, the book of one. And what about Ra? Did you dictate the book, the Ra material? We are in charge of the Ra material. Mm -hmm. There is a book on earth, a series of books, which are called Ra material, which is R-A, spelled R-A, after Egyptian god Ra, the law of one. The, the series is called the law of one. It is part of what we are. Excellent. So in Ra material, it was said that you, yeah, Carla Rukert, Dot, and Don Elkins were the, the creators of it. Carla was the church handler. And it is a very essential book for in our culture, uh, channel between 1981 and 84. So my uh, point is that in the book, you acknowledge that your understanding of humanity is limited because you, are, you were too much separated from, from us. Um, yes, the separation has been great because we were with you at some periods, but now the separation is greater and you have changed as far as peoples go. And so our understanding is not as great as it once was, but our understanding of what is happening is sufficient. Do you understand? Yes. Thank you for explaining that. If any, at any point you want more information, we would be happy to provide it in any way um, which is friendly. Yes. If it is necessary, if it is ready for your people to hear. Thank you. Are you talking to human governments directly? Your human governments cannot be reckoned with or reasoned with in a way that we would want to. So we stay out of that particular situation. Thank you. Besides, we are not here to interfere that way. Our interference is merely educational and preventative. So are you aware of the human colony community? We are aware of all things around your planet mm -hmm. and all cultures on your planet. Okay. All right, I think I ran out of time. Uh, at this moment, I would like to thank you for the contact and um, do you have any questions to me? No. Would you mind giving us a blessing in your language? A blessing for humanity or for you personally? For the humanity in our language if possible i do not know if it will be able to come through but one moment shall
the blessing will be given. Thank you. It will not be heard by your ears. Okay. It is a download to humanity, as we always do give our thought process to your people in many ways. I interpret that your people are moving forward and need our help but we will give it only when they ask. And there will be some times when you, it is inappropriate for you to ask. But we do help as much as possible. And as for blessings, God is the one, as you call him, in many different words and many different titles. The one who gives the blessing. We ourselves are only the speaker of words. Thank you. Uh, I invite uh, your telepathic communications directly to me. You shall receive a thought process. Thank you. It may not be at this moment, but when it is appropriate to download and connect with you. Thank you. I uh, appreciate your visit, appreciate that contact, and thank you much for your protection which you provide for the solar system. Thank you much for your good intentions, and thank you for allowing us to express our free will. You are welcome. We are more scientifically involved with you than we are morally in many ways. Thank you. This is all from my side. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm open. I am finished. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Good, thank you. Nice session. Good, I'm glad. 